Hey guys, welcome. How you doing tonight? It's JD, the Mobile Trader, coming to you. This is the Mobile Trader Network, and we're having our Sunday Mastermind, the first one of 2021. All right, we made it out of 2020, guys. We're good to go. I uh, hope all is well. I just want to see uh, what we have in store for 2021. Um, if you guys have taken a look at your 2020 or revisited uh, your trades or revisited your your uh, your investment strategy for 20, how how we, how you did, how how we performed in 2020, let me know in the chat uh, because. Sometimes, you know, I used to not like looking back, but it's something that we have to, we have to do. Um, I know that I always talk about strategy and, and time horizon and things like that. I want to kind of jump right into it and let you guys see a couple of things. Um, one of my goals in 2020 was to corral and saddle Tesla, literally. I was like, Tesla's, I'm, I'm a, I'm a wrap Tesla. I'm going to put a saddle on and I'm going to make some money. And I did it. It, it, it happened, you know, but it took, you know, it took COVID really, I, I hate to not to say it like that, but it took COVID for me to just settle in and focus. And I was off the road more. And what I did was I was, I tried to track the heartbeat. Of, of a stock and that's what we have to do uh, whether it's long term short term we need to know you know i mean and if we can track the the things on the periphery things that may affect it whether it's like with tesla we know that uh supply and demand comes into play a lot of euphoria but um hitting milestones whether it's deliveries whether it's uh earnings reports whether it's uh, share um this this is what I want to lead into. Whether it's a uh, the issuing new shares and, and this uh, share, uh, price dilution, but the S and P five hundred, I I never really tracked uh, additions and deletions from the S and P five hundred in the, in the chat bar. Have you guys ever paid attention to companies being added and removed from the S and P and how it will uh, um, how it affects the stock's price or stock's performance, because th this is one thing that um, momentum and uh, volatility comes into play, especially in options. And that's my, that was my primary thing. And so I want to give you guys a play that I'm studying as well, too. We can go right into that. But with Tesla, uh, let's go to the daily chart. We're on the weekly chart. And this is an indicator that I want you guys to kind of maybe study. Uh, you can look at it on uh, investors. Bit well, I'll pull up. Uh, I'll pull up uh, Investopedia. That's going to be an easier way to do it. But we'll, we'll, let me type in. But it's the RSI, the, the um, acronym R letters R S I, and the acronym stands for Relative Strength Index. And I, I, I swear by this one. Um, there, there's other indicators that are similar, uh, like um, the stochastics. But let me let me put the RSI. You have the stochastics. You have the MACD, uh, which is MACD uh, stochastics. You have a slow stochastic and a fast stochastic, and they all kind of monitor momentum and uh, money going in and out of a particular stock or whatever we're whatever we're tracking so let me pull up on the screen what we have here and i just want to give you guys maybe next week i'll do another indicator but this week we're going to look at the rsi and um here it is right here what is what is the relative strength index it's a momentum indicator now some people don't like to put a lot of indicators on their charts this doesn't cloud my charts it can be listed under the lower as a lower study you know, on, on some of your, uh, when you're looking at it, looking for it on your uh, trading platform. But I'm on Thinkorswim and it's easy to add to it. And with the RSI guys, traditional interpretation and usage of the RSI are the values of 70, 
of, of 70 or above indicate a security is being becoming overbought or overvalued. Now, when, when we talk about um, Charlie Munger talks about inefficient markets, uh, people always talk about, oh, man, that's overbought. That's overvalued. Uh, do you think Tesla stock price is too high? Do you think now we have to use it in context? If once it gets above 70, that doesn't mean we immediately come in for a short. It just lets us know that, hey, things may be getting a little extended. And there's another phrase that we'll always hear. Um, markets or particular stocks can remain in overbought or oversold status longer than we can remain solvent. So for, for instance, if I'm looking to short Tesla, which a lot of people have been trying to do, and it's over, just because I'm going off the over, it overbought status and it's, it's, it can't go any higher, blah, blah, blah. And I put the short on next thing you know, and it's still running and it's still running. They're saying, oh, they're propping it up. It, 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 they're, they're just uh, manipulating this stock. Whatever they're doing, you make you. We have to realize we can't be stubborn. If we want to make money, there, there's the saying that do you want to make money or do you want to be right every time? If we realize that, hey, maybe I got in a little too soon, we have to adjust our, our you know, we have to take our egos out of the play, out of out of position. So back to the RSI, anything over 70 is considered overbought, and anything below 30 is considered oversold or undervalued. Now, the the way I look at it, I want you guys, you guys can study this on your own a little bit more in depth, but the relative strength index is just strength of the move. If I look for this and uh, in volume, I kind of watch volume too. And it's, it's just something that keeps really Tesla kind of obeyed it uh, on certain time frames. So we'll go back here to the main screen, think or swim. I'm on the weekly chart and I, I had a target area for Tesla on the screen. I wrote 736. You know, I was like, okay, so between 736, 765, it made it up to the high of like 718. And I took, I, I took profit. I unwound my trade. I hopped into it. I started trading Tesla on September 21st, 2020. That day I bought shares as a stock and then i started trading the options each week and i want to do it all i just said i'm going to do it all the way until they get into the s p and it was called the tesla retirement play now if we go down here on the weekly the rsi will adjust for each time frame that we're on so it may be overbought on the weekly and it could be barely overbought on the daily and then you go down to like the five minute and it may be oversold so you, we have to learn how to catch the rhythm of that uh, particular stock. But on the weekly, we have, we're still on a bullish trend. And what do you guys see? We're above 70, we're, we're, we're overbought, but it hasn't, I mean, it's been even, it's been even higher. It's been up over 93 on the weekly before. So um, we look at that, um, we go to the daily, you know, this is called the top down analysis. I'm going weekly down to the day. Now the day, if we go a little bit deeper, I, I, my chart, my guys, I, I marked this chart up so much. So bear with me just for a little bit. I'll remove a little bit of it. Go to the daily. I mean, had a channel, had a trading range, basically, or a horizontal channel, whatever you want to call it broke out, ran, and then we went into a wide bull channel. Catch the bottom of these ranges. And then I looked down, RSI was overbought, overbought, overbought. But this, even when it's overbought and the sell-offs weren't really going that low on the daily. So I was like, okay, this is a strong trend, strong trend. I'm cool with that. Now, if I go further, I, I could go to the four hour, the hour, but what I, what I normally trade off of is a five minute on Tesla. And one thing with Tesla, if it becomes overbought on, on the five minute, it really, it, you should not buy Tesla if you're trying to trade it. Now, and I'm sure it goes for several other stocks that are high flyers, 
you don't try to buy a stock when it's overbought. That that's just on the lower time frame because a lot of times that thing is going to recycle back down. And Tesla was it was no different. A lot of times I wouldn't enter Tesla if I wanted to add to a position or, or increase a play until it fell below 30. And a lot of times it'll fall below 30 and it would do it twice. <clears throat> and that's when I would really know that it was about to make a run. Like back here, it fell below twice, then it fell below again. And these are all pre-market overbought. Then it ran back down. So guys, on the lower time frame, you're going to get a lot of more volatile moves. So you just have to learn how to kind of watch and uh, and kind of get a rhythm. And shoot, hey, what's going on, Ben? I see you say it does what it wants, man, but but it does. But it, it actually respects, you know, the of course, I mean, it's going to do what it wants with with supply and demand, but it does respect a lot of the uh, like double bottoms. Uh, it respects the fact that like it, it'll come down and touch the bottom of that RSI. And you can go long and set your stops into wide stop because a lot of times it'll go long and it'll come back and retest down there. But if you get a nice double bottom on the on an RSI and got pe people don't really use the double bottom tactics down here. You mostly use it on the technical technical side on the chart. But I started to use it down here and I, on Tesla. Now, now, this may not work for the other things, but I would enter after that double bottom a little bit. I'd buy, you know, I'd buy some, um, a contract and, and have a little time, but it, it's just, I caught a, I caught the rhythm of Tesla is what, what I'm saying. So to, to lead into this, I want you guys to study an, in, an indicator, whether it's the RSI, the MACD, the stochastic, something that where you can start learning, you know, if, if, if you're just always hopping into to options and you don't have a, a plan or a trading plan. It's, it's time in 2021 to construct one. I mean, you can pay for one, you can go take a class, whatever it is, but or you can just keep working and you can construct your own. It's, it, it'll take more time and you have to test it and practice it and lose some money because it's, it's part of the tuition. The only way to test your own plan is to test it in, you know, after you paper trade it or virtual trade it, you test it in the market. And we have to see okay, will, th will this work? Can I hold this stock during this time frame? Will it, th will it kill me? What's the probability? You know, then you start establishing your, your risk position. Like, okay, I'm willing to risk only 10% per trade of, of that particular trade. Or I'm willing to risk, I'll take a risk of 25% to try to make 50. The risk will re the risk reward must be established. So, <clears throat> and and no one can do it for you. You can't, well, I can't say, hey, this is what you need to have down as your risk reward threshold or parameters. It has to come down to each individual, what, where you are in your, in your journey in life, uh, financially, emotionally, because it comes into the, the uh, being able to under, live <clears throat> in an emotional uh an emotional level of unknown because the, we don't know wh what they call it on, you know, on the, uh, when you're trading, they call this right here, the zoom in, they call it the hard right edge. It, we can always look back to the left and say, oh man, you should have gotten in here, should have done this. Oh, why didn't you go here? Why don't you sell? <clears throat> Only thing we can see on our screen is right here. What's happening on this day. We don't know what's happening on Monday, you know, on the, the upcoming. We can predict. People can say they know. It's, it comes with the probability. It's, I mean, it's only one person who knows, and he is not worried about the stock market. I mean, you know, he's worried about who's in the market, but he's not worried about, hey, J.D. has a long position in Tesla. Let's go ahead and make Tesla run up a little bit, 6%, because, he, you know, he, he, he's been praying. You know, he's been... I, I, you know, hey, I, I don't, I don't believe that the Lord is looking at it like that. Or, but I'm saying is that we, we, we can look back to the left, the hard right edge, that's coming. We just have to accept. We put on our trade. We, we set our, we set, establish our edge. When I, not the hard right edge, but our edge is like, okay, 
I like trading uh, wedge patterns. I like trading reversals. I like looking for uh, breakouts. Okay, I have that. There's certain parameters that I look for. And when I find it, I'll enter. Uh, if I find a news catalyst, like, like the S&P 500 inclusion, like I'm building up to, to get us into one second, okay, that's another, that's another check. That's, so we're all we're adding context to a position. Then we say, okay, there, we have no clue what's going on. That, if I'm looking right here, that looks like bull, that's a bull candle, man. That's a bullish engulfing, whatever it is. I'm, I mean, came off of a wedge pattern. But we never know exactly what's going to happen. So that's why we have to set parameters to say, if I get in right here, I will risk to the point of it coming down to 274, you know, or, or whatever it is. And if it doesn't come down here and take me out, I'll stay in. Let's say 274, whatever it is. And let's say it takes me out and next thing you know, it trends and trends and it, and it breaks out. We just have to establish kind of guidelines of well, what, what we're planning to do. And if the price does X, I'll do Y. If the price does X, I'll do Y again, you know, or if it doesn't do this, I'll let it ride. So in 2021, work on establishing that guys. And how many of you guys have your, have your trading plan in place? Uh, for 2021, maybe you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but an idea of, of what you're looking for, whether it's a trading plan or an investment strategy, uh, because that can be the, the guiding force. And we, if you have that foundation, we can just move, you, you know, we can move from there. Uh, let, let's go to the one stock that I want to talk about. Um, is it in a buy, sell or hold recommendation? In phase energy is going to be added to the S and P 500 this week um, on January 7th, I believe. Uh, let me pull up the and it's a solar company. I'm watching the elections in Georgia for uh, Tuesday is going to be big because let's say um, the Biden Harris uh, card, you know. They're, they're having positive news from the standpoint of clean energy, their energy initiatives, uh, a lot of positive uh, results from that. And anytime you get some good news out of Washington for the Biden-Harris uh, ticket or, or, or administration for, you know, president-elect and vice president-elect, the energy stocks are popping. Um, the cannabis stocks have, have seen positive moves, uh, even even crypto, which of course, I mean, Bitcoin is, is up over 30, 33, it was up over 34 earlier. So things that alternative energy sources are things that, that are uh, possibilities. So I'm watching this chart. It's a bullish chart. Uh, I hopped in, we had a sell off right here, found support, made a double bottom. And I'm just kind of watching, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a trade right now in in phase, but what I want to see is how we act as we head towards, uh, let's see. Wow, Roth Capital. That is crazy. I just watched a movie, guys. You have to watch this movie called The China Hustle. Uh, it's on YouTube. It might be on the, you might be able to find it on Netflix, but I think I, I rented it for like $2, $3. Talks about the Chinese companies that are coming over, like Alibaba, JD.com, but they're, they're, Chinese ADRs uh, are companies that can be listed on American stock exchanges that allow us to trade a Chinese firm or company, but a certain bank has to bring them there. A certain promoter bank will promote them and list them. Well, Roth Capital was one of the banks that was highlighted in this movie. And I just saw them, you know, they gave an, an analyst update on, on uh, in phase, but beware, let's, let's, I'm kind of jumping around. Beware of, of the China stocks right now during this process because several of them have been delisted. Uh, the current administration has kind of been an adversarial relationship with China. And then also there's so much unknown. That, that movie opened eyes for me, opened my eyes to a lot of things, a lot of unknown. And um, it, it's about an hour and a half, but it is, it, it's, 
it's it's informative. Uh, so I'm I'm pretty cautious right now. They were skept they're skeptical of Alibaba. Dude, the guys I, I say the dude. Uh, there's some short sellers, man. They were just, they would short anything that was coming from China from the, just with some big time valuations, big time numbers on the, on the books and that they couldn't, they couldn't be proven. Uh, so, um, they questioned Alibaba. <clears throat> I just want you to want us to do our homework. If we want to look towards the future, because I had said short term, be cautious of China possible chance for a long-term position in some of those companies. So, I, but I'm, I'm kind of maybe adjusting that to really, really, really be cautious about moving into a long-term hold unless you have, you know, you just have to go with your conviction though. But um, back to Enphase. Enphase is set to replace Tiffany C company on the S&P 500 on January 7th. So one of the things that we've learned during the Tesla move, moving into the S&P 500 is that you have uh, a lot of a lot of funds, a lot of benchmark funds, a lot of tracking funds that follow the S and P tick for tick, and they will have exactly they'll they'll try to have the exact allocation of what the I think there's 505 companies in S and P 500. So uh, when they remove Tiffany, I think they'll sell Tiffany shares and they'll add in phase. And there's a lot of uh, hedge funds or fund managers that will need to uh, acquire shares of Enphase. So I'm going to watch uh, the volume on Enphase to see how this moves uh, as, as we move forward, guys, because the idea is that it came, the volume picked up, the price increased with Tesla as we move towards uh, the 21st of December. I, I think that's when the inclusion happened. And then you had a lot of the implied volatility died. It just, it sunk a great deal. So the idea is like the buildup, like the week of, and then right as the inclusion date occurs, there was a sell-off in Tesla. So look for, if you're trying to get in, maybe maybe look for an entry if, if it fits your criteria and then possibly look for an exit, you know, because I, I have not traded in phase. I'm in a small, in, in a, Let's, I'll find the call that I'm in, but let's just look at the volume. Volume steady, but with Tesla, man, the volume started coming in the day before and like the day of uh, inclusion. So as we get later into this week, that Tuesday election in Georgia should let us know if it's going to be a Democratic Senate or a GOP Senate. And that, that's going to be key for some things getting passed. And I believe if we get the Democratic nod, uh, clean energy initiatives will go a little bit smoother. Uh, so this, it, it, it could bode well in the solar sector as well. Um, next one I want to talk about, um, let's go to the option chain on that, on uh, in phase. And I'm down 98 bucks right now uh, on that, just one contract, one small position. Um, it's the January 15th. I'm in the 175 call. We're currently at 175. So I'm in the money. Delta's good at 55. Volume last week was 1,024. Open interest 981. Implied volatility is at 78. So I look at IV, guys. Uh, a lot of people don't really just pay attention to it, but I pay attention to this because if I'm looking to see if, if it gets like right now down here in the out of the monies, it's over 100. So I feel we have room to spike up to the hundreds. And then once it gets up there, I, I may, I, I'll, I'll look to exit because when implied volatility gets sucked out or it begins to decrease, maybe goes into the 40s, 60s, 50s, 40s, our, our premiums, we lose value. It, it's just implied volatility helps. It kind of catalyzes the price and it catalyzes our returns. That's what we have to keep an eye on. That's something that you can study. So IV, when I talk about IV, I'm talking about implied volatility. Um, that's just something to just study if you, if you go into options. It's something that it's not always discussed, but if you want to maybe swing trade or possibly day trade options, you need to pay attention to implied volatility 
and you want to pay attention. I mean, we always pay attention to open interest. You get a little bit more into it and you pay attention to the volume on that day, because let's say you get in early and you want to see your volume increase as you go. That lets you know that, Hey, okay, someone's following me into this, or there, there's big players coming into this, into this move. Um, and with, with, with think or swim, one of the things I do like is that we can look down here and we can look at the volume on the put call ratio of like, okay, it's heavily bullish. People are really in, coming into end phase. It's not like large, like Tesla, but they're coming into this thing and I'm comfortable with that move. You know, I'm comfortable. It doesn't, it doesn't mean it's going to go where I plan, but the probabilities are moving in that, in that direction. Um, last touch. I want to touch on this. Uh, we have this trading have to establish a plan or strategy. Uh, our key study is going to be the RSI. Just kind of just dive into that. You can go to YouTube, you can, and, and people will break it down. There'll be some people that you don't want to listen to, but then there's going to be someone that you kind of like, okay, I like what this, uh, individual is talking about. I like the way they, you know, they explain this, um, careful with China. We're definitely, I mean, we have to reassess how we did in 2020 so we can move forward in 2021. Um, with 2021, guys, I'm looking, of course, Tesla. Square is on my list for me to pay attention, you guys. I, and go if you, if you feel like sharing, write them out in, in, in the chat what, what's on your 2021 list, whether it's going to be your accumulating shares. Because if we trade all day and never accumulate shares, that we're going to miss one component of, of, of our, that should hopefully be in our, our uh, strategy is long-term wealth building. And we need to have shares. And that's one of the things that I, you know, I need to get my positions, rebuild my positions in certain, certain areas. Uh, Apple is going to be on my list for 2021. I need it. I just want to look at Apple and just see, I think Apple's going to pull back and I'm now from a long-term perspective, you, you know, you buy it, you buy, I'm, for me, I, I buy it, 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 different increments, you know, at different price levels, but I have a, um, an area marked on my chart. that was a big time gap. Apple has a good, they're pretty good at coming back and filling gaps. I, I just, it might be a year before they fill this gap, you know? So, it's going, it's pulling back right now. It might be going down to like 128, 129. I think there's a pullback in, in you know, in route, which is visible. Uh, but one of the things that I want to do is start adding shares at different points, at different price levels. So it, we hit a double top with Apple guys. I think that pullback is going to bring us probably, I mean, 128, 120, it could even even go back down to 122 or lower. It's it just, I, I don't trade Apple. Well, I buy and hold Apple. I do much better job of buying and holding Apple. And that that's what we trying to try to get comfortable doing. Uh, now arc, I, thank you, Tyrese. That, that was uh, thank you for that. Arc is, uh, is something that, that I, I, I want to, the, the arc suite of, of funds there, there, I mean, they have ARKK, ARKW, ARKF, ARKQ, you know, the FinTech, they have autonomous driving, uh, they have the innovation fund. So I, I like certain managers who, who are on the side of innovation, who are, who are innovators, who are ahead of the curve, who kind of press the envelope. Kathy Wood runs ARK, and she also bought her controlling share back from that company who tried to make that, that kind of semi-hostile uh, takeover, but that that's good. Okay, and Jerry put in there, uh, put put his goal out there of accumulating 500 shares of certain companies and three leaps on certain stocks. Guys, that, that's great. You don't have to have the exact same, lay, exact layout as Jerry, but make a, write it down to where we can revisit it because if we don't have it written down, if we don't, and I'm not talking about type it out, you know, on our phone or, or, 
like our young ones do, but when we stroke it out on that pen or pencil, we're making that movement in our brain too. We're thinking it through and we're putting it out in an atmosphere into the ethos or whatever, you know, and, and we can revisit it. Um, that that's just, I, I truly feel that's important. So, um, Apple is one of them. I, 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 I mean, I really love ARK, A-R-K-K. -K. I'm a big fan of that. I want us to uh, also, guys, Jerry mentioned leaps, leap options. Um, you make the call on those guys, leaps are the long-term long -term equity appreciation uh, plays. It's, it's, it's a longer version of an option. It's like a, like a year out. You pay a little bit more, uh, but you have more time. But then sometimes if you, the stock, owning the stock, there's a safety net there, guys, too. I believe that if you'd like a company, why not build that position? Now, if it's out of your reach, there's also share building programs, dividend reinvestment programs, but take the time. And, and so we can build a, a dossier, a, a, a footlocker full of shares, and then you can trade around a, a core position. That was the goal during the, the Tesla retirement play. Uh, acquire my shares, which I, I, my mood, uh, I, my pension for baseball was, was they were going to not uh, manage it anymore. You know, they were ending that. So I was like, I'm not going to let it go to an insurance provider to where, they, and, and who knows what's going to happen with, with, you know, all the, I always, I just kind of worried about how people have managed pensions when we had no control over it. So I took control of it and I said, I'll manage it. And Tesla was part of that, part of that game plan. And so that was my focus from September 21st to the end of the year. And it, it was probably 130% return on it. So it, I'm looking for, I'm not, I don't need another 130% return, but I, I'm, I'm not going to sniff it, sneeze at it. So that's why I looked at end phase again. And that's something we can pay attention to. I don't know how often companies will leap in and out of, out of the S and P, but it just so happens there's a second one within the last, you know, within two weeks. So let's just see how this plays out over the next few days, you know, how in phase moves, then we can move on. So guys put in the chat, like your, maybe your, your favorite stock of 2021 and just keep an eye on it guys, because you can look at the charts. We can track the charts. We can track the options chain to see like what, you know, you can see on the options chain, we have in phase up here. We can go out one month, like to February, and just kind of look down open interest and see if there's any any anything out of the money that, that catches our eye. Okay, 1700, it's not really big. They're heavily bullish. I, I do a quick scan, do a quick scan. So that's like 40, 50, it's a bullish setup. Uh, we go back to Tesla. And we, you can just look at how many calls are out there. Everybody is bullish Tesla. Um, you start looking at the open interest like, okay, well, when you, when you get into something like Tesla guys, this is just, this is just a strategy and a suggestion buy time if you're if you're and and do not go against the prevailing trend because tesla has it it, it, it kills the short players i mean if you're going to the short side or buying puts and if you're trading it on robin hood and you're trying to buy puts a lot of times you're going to get trapped in there because their server is going to lock it's going to freeze with the type of volume that comes into play so you try to get 15 at the minimum 30, but the, and you have to have the capital to make that trade to where you can risk and stay in it and, and not be emotional. Like, okay, I'm calm. I'm good. You know, and trust your, your charting. Um, let's see what we have here. Pellant PLTR. Yeah. They're getting a lot of love. Uh, MRNA has sell. uh, Hey, Crystal, you, you know, you're really good at catching those, uh, 
catching them before they move. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at mRNA. Palantir, man, I, Palantir, uh, I've been, uh, a lot of people have been really saying Palantir is about to try to pop. And I say people, I'm the, a lot of individuals I follow on YouTube. I don't trust uh, when people say, oh, it's about to pop because, I mean, how, how do we know it's going to pop? Who knows? But there's when I, there's a re, there's something going on with uh, a lot of love. Yeah, yeah, Crystal. Look, I mean, do you tell me, would you put five hundred thousand dollars in Moderna right now to say it's going to go back up here before it goes down to this support level? It may. I can't. This is. I don't jump. That's called getting ahead of price for me if I'm trading it. If I just like Moderna, if I just, you know, if I'm a fan of Moderna to just do it, I don't care what people say. I can't, you know, you can't tell me anything anyway. I'm, I, I like Moderna. I like their Band-Aids. I like their, you know, I like the fact they, they make a, a nice tasting cod liver oil. You know, I'm just making jokes, guys, but, it, you know, but if I'm looking at the chart, Who can predict? I can't predict this one. You, you. It looks like a sale up on on this thing. It, it literally looks like a, it was a sailboat. I don't know what it's. I don't know what's going on with Moderna. I didn't trust them in the beginning. I kept saying that they were inflating price. They were inflating uh, their results. But the chart is literally saying these dudes are. are this is the bearish of bear charts. Who who would go long on this? Now, the only reason to go long is if you're guessing, if you're hoping, and, and you might hit on it too. It, but there's nothing empirically on the on the chart that says Moderna's going to reverse and go. A lot of times when you, when you have a, a trend like this, this acute to the downside, it you know, it may bounce up. But a lot of times it'll go in a trading range a little bit longer. Then it'll make its decision coming up. Sometimes you get just a crazy V-shaped recovery like we've had right now. But most of the times they're not sustainable. I got out of Moderna when the first vaccine was administered. Good job, Danielle. Yeah, those trust issues on uh, Palantir, I mean, on uh, Moderna, I mean, the chart, that's a, that's a no-go for me on the chart. And let's just see what the... Uh, option chain looks like because options players speak volumes um 79,000 to 67 you know calls to puts but let's just dig a little deeper you go into money all right at the 61 to 80 delta a lot of times that's deep in the money it's bearish it's 8,000 puts to 4,000 calls and we go even higher, like to really tick for tick, like 81 to 100 delta. That's almost like penny for penny movement on the on the option for the stock. 9,000 to 1,000. So on the surface, you see, okay, Moderna's still bullish. You go down to the real money matters, like where the, the options really move, like similar to the stock. They're betting against Moderna. Now, it might just be over the short term, but I just be careful. But I'm glad you hopped out. Oh, good. Long term for Tesla. And that, that's a long term bond hold. And now think about Tesla. Expect a significant retracement at some point in 2021 before it makes a big time move. You, you know, so it could be opportunity to grab more. So don't, don't, you know, um, that you're saying long term, establish, it's established. That's an outstanding decision. And and the next move is to be prepared for anything. Avoid the news. Um, uh, oh, Palantir. They keep, okay, now look. It's at that double bottom. There is a double bottom right here, legitimately. Next move is to see what the four hour looks like for me to see if there's anything that came in, but hmm. It's finding found a little bit of support at that four hour handle. 
There's a secondary uh, level of uh, of the breakout area that I think is going to come back down to before it goes up. Let's see. Now, I don't trade Palantir. I just hadn't done it for like 22. Maybe where you said, Ben, let me just see what. Revisit that. Ah, you're going to get it, dude. Good call, Ben. Great assessment, because I do feel it's coming back into this range, into down in here a little bit. And that's where the buyers came in last time. There's also buyers down here at the 1840. If it if it breaches these levels, and you know that if it breaches that 22 level, but breaches 2150, that's a that's kind of a a short term pivot point to where it may come back down into these levels down in here. You know, the, the 19 handle might be something uh, to think about. I don't know what, what kind of news with Palantir, but I keep seeing the uh, YouTubers talk about it. Palantir technology shares are trading lower, not seeing any specific news. So, uh, and nobody understands Palantir, but they, they talk negative, but it's been running. I, but I think this speaks volumes right here for me, that daily chart. Um, it's in the trading range right now. I'm not shorting it because, I mean, it, it found support, but it could find a little bit more downside before it runs back up. I'm not involved in Palantir. Ben, I, I can tell you have a good feel for that one. Um, this is, that would be one I would, for me, I would back away from. I, I just can't, I can't, I don't have a feel for it. That, guys, that's another thing. If you trade something, you want to get a feel for that heartbeat or how that stock performs or acts or moves or, or reacts. Uh, uh, Danielle's up 579% plug. That's amazing. Outstanding. And I know you have also some biotech and pharma moves too. Great job. I know Tyrese called out uh, Alcoa during, during one of our classes months ago, during a down, when it was in this downtrend. They were holding for a long period, you know, they had, but she and her family, her husband had the game plan in place from a long-term viewpoint. So it wasn't getting to them to where it's like, oh man, that's crazy. But I was like, I couldn't trade it. I wouldn't, and I'm not in it. So it's nothing that I'm, I'm bullish about, but there was support right around the, right below 11. And it never came, it never sniffed it. And it's been running, it's making a, one of the nicest bull flags I've seen in a minute. You know, so great job on that, Tyrese. Um, just waiting for the spot to add. You're in at 10 bucks. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, I figured y'all you, were still hanging with that one. Great job, Ben. Uh, here's another one, guys. And I've been shorting off and on Nicola. Since um, <laughs> since it that the news came, since it ran parabolic, and but I was hopping in and out because I wasn't trusting my my my. I just didn't know that stock, and it was just weird. It was like you know, okay, it, it's a negative. It, it's got negative news. It went down. They removed the uh, CEO. Then all of a sudden, price would bounce back up. It would find a, it, it would find some level of support. Well, uh, let's remove this. I'm I'm looking to get back in this thing to the downside, guys. I'm not going long, Nicola. Uh, I just it, it's at a level. If it falls a little bit lower, uh, I may and it's going to be a risk play. It'd be it's not a speculative play, but I, I'll put a full risk position on to where I'll risk my not my entire, but my entire amount that I'm willing. It's called a businessman's risk. Uh, that's what, and I have a, a level that's set like at $15.05. If it falls below that, that's that's go time for me, you know? 
and I just want to, I want to, if it hits that, we move in and I'll say, I'll, I'll establish that down to like, you know, right below 14. I might do, look for a dollar move and try to try hop in and hop out. And if it pushes past it, I'll go even further. But, you know, I've been in at 27 and I'd hop out and I was in back over here and I, I then I lost a little money then I hit some, but this chart has been one of those charts that there's the, the pattern is called a descending triangle. Um, if you can spot a particular pattern or, 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 or a, I don't know, a, I say pattern, but if you, you know, something that gives you an edge that where you say, okay, this trend, this pattern, this, 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 this particular angle, this price action, it's indicative of lower prices or indicative of higher prices. And it repeats over and over again. That's what um, I look for without just messing up my chart. Let me, let me I'll, I'll remove a couple of these. But descending triangles, guys, let's draw it out. I could draw it along the tops of these wicks up here. I, I could use that as my point, and that is my second point. Go right in there. So descending triangle basically, or I can even go in here and go down. You're gonna get lower highs on the descending triangle. And a lot of times price level will find it's a base that it's really not just breaching and as price conditions decline lower highs you get a lot of a lot of consolidation or price contraction and you look for a breakout a breakdown or a breakout on the conversely or opposite side of that you'll have an ascending triangle which is bullish descending tri triangles are bearish not a guarantee but the probability is there so i'm looking at that setup falls below 1505 i'm looking at hopping in nikola to the short side uh, let's see, Fastly. Yeah, Fastly's big. Uh, and um, oh, I found out it isn't a real company. And they keep, you know, and, and if there's some negative news catalyst, guys, it, Nikola falls even further. It's just something that I kind of watch the news if you before. I'm not, I'm not suggesting you guys short it or test it out, but um, it's something that when uh, they're losing their their strategic connections or, or their their partnerships uh gm that that issue kind of hit them hard losing the ceo and then they had a, another uh, partnership like right here uh, nicola ends collaboration on garbage truck development with a company uh company called republic services they canceled a large order of like five thousand trucks 25 to five thousand trucks 2500 to five thousand that was a big move and it hit them you know it hit them last week and then they found a little support so i'm watching this for this week guys so in phase and nicola to the short side we'll keep an eye on the cues guys and keep an eye on bitcoin uh bitcoin is running talk about over extended um if you're long term talking about 5, 10, 15, 20, or like we say in play hide and go seek, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30 you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> you can buy it, hold it, let it pull back. I, I see, I mean, I think we're going to come back to into the uh, right below 30. I do think we'll fill the gap down here, you know, at 24. I, I feel that that's coming. Those are buy points at times, you know, uh, there's support. But it's so much momentum in there. But remember the RSI, guys, it does work on the on the Bitcoin chart. We have a double top on the RSI, fully extended parabolic run. It may go 35. I, I, I wouldn't short it. I would not short this. But I'm waiting a little bit. If I was still mining, I'd oh, I'd be, uh, be so much into money. I had to turn my miners off for a little bit, but still. There's some gaps on Bitcoin, so keep an eye on that. And uh, yeah, if 
if if twenty if, if Bitcoin falls back that twenty four k guys, we can you we can jump in. I had my friend put in fifty bucks uh, about over a year ago, and he you know it finally started running, and he's paying attention to it a little bit more. So we can nickel and dime it, nickel and dime it, and and and, and put you know and and keep your uh, don't leave your 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 coins on the the basic exchanges. Now Coinbase isn't Coinbase is pretty secure. If you don't have an offline wallet or, uh, and uh, what is it called? I mean, um, if you don't have a cold wallet, hard wallet, or or an online wallet like Exodus, Coinbase has a, a function on there where you can vault your coins, uh, where they don't leave it on the exchange, so to speak. But it's it's best if you take them offline or take them into your own your own wallet. But if we're forgetful. If we're, you know, Coinbase is, is not a bad option. I mean, people might say, oh, it's regulated. Okay, it's better than not having Bitcoin. It's better than not having, you know, just this. If they get on you and try to shame you for not being a purist, tell them to say it to your face, you know, because this this is this how you're doing it. So, But protect your coins. Don't leave them on those other exchanges that, that maybe, because it's called a honeypot if you leave all, if unless you're trading. If you leave all your coins on there, if you're trading in there, if they get hit, everybody gets hit. Uh, just like, I mean, any time it's a data breach, because basically it's, they're grabbing data. So you can vault your coins or you can you can transfer them over. Even uh, Cash App has a, uh, a good buying process. So I, I wouldn't leave it on Cash App. I don't know how they handle it, but... Uh, Take it to Exodus or take it to to uh, the Ledger Nano X or, you know, you start researching that. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Ledger Nano X and uh, different ones. And there, there's a lot of groups on here. Uh, Mo Jackson's group, DCG, they 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 really they go hard with crypto breakdowns. They go hard. Um, but guys, if um, just stay, stay focused this week, I'm, I'm a wrap right now. Uh, I'm not going to hip hop rap. My, my rap is kind of weak, but I'm going to wrap up for this evening. Buying on Robinhood, Ricari, I don't, <clears throat> I don't know if you can, does anyone know if you can buy it on Robinhood? Do we have control of our, our private keys to where we can move it off there? Hey, Robin, how you doing? I, I don't know, guys, uh, because if you buy it on Robinhood, hopefully you probably can't take it off of Robinhood. You want to, if you buy it on a platform like, okay, PayPal, PayPal is cool, but you can't move it. That means they own the Bitcoin that you buy. They own the crypto. The only thing, only time we own the crypto is when I can pull it out of the bank or pull it off of that exchange and take it with me. It's like the idea of having crypto is like um, for the unbanked. That's one of them. Is that like, let's say I'm in Liberia or I'm over in Venezuela and they are where they can literally go in and shut down a bank and take the money for and call it state funds because they need funding for the government. They can they can they can access our savings account. Let's say I put all my money on Bitcoin and I have to flee the country. Well, if I can have it on a ledger or I can have it in an online uh, 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 wallet to where all I have to do is memorize my uh, my my you know, my, what is it, my 12 word uh, pass key or whatever. I can go to another city. If I have a Wi-Fi connection, I can get online. And I can, I can access my, my funds again. But I mean, yeah, if I, if I, yeah, I can access PayPal or whatever, but I mean, no, I, if we, if you don't have control of it, don't buy it on there. I tested PayPal and I just wanted to test it out and bought some Ethereum on there but you can't move it off network. We want to be able to move our coins when we would like to. So it's like, really, you can't change banks. If like you have Bank of America and you put your money in there, say, I want to go to Wachovia or whatever. I don't know, Chase say, no, you can't do it. it we, you can't move it. You can, you can cash out and you know, that kind of thing. But so think about that before, before you buy, you know, uh, if you can't move it, don't, don't, don't really mess with that. So, but guys, I'm gonna look on, on the list. Uh, oh, I'll open up the, the, the trading room, the same link, same link, same passcode. Uh, I'll open it most likely around 7.30 a.m. Central. 
So that means 8.30 a.m. East Coast, which is New York time, 7.30 Central is in Chicago, New Orleans, Texas, you know, West Coast Pacific time was y'all are 5.30 before, yeah. So anyway, guys, y'all are welcome to come in here. I'll have the trading room up and uh, I'll kind of talk through if I'm having any trades. It'll be kind of tough for me to have a mic open if I have live money on the market. But if I, if I close out my trades early, we'll just open the mics up, but mostly we'll just use a chat bar and then uh, go from there. And if I have time, you know, a lot of times I'm not going to be trading a lot. I'll pop. And then if you have some questions about a different stock or not, I'll see what I can do. Uh, but guys, we move forward. We just lay out a game plan. Don't try to short, don't be the contrarian and short everything that's running up just because it's run up and you think it's like, okay, it's got to go back down. It doesn't have to. That's, I always say, try not to get ahead of price until price gives us that signal that it's time to make that move. You know, of, be careful with earnings. I have a lot of, you know, friends that say they can, they can predict what, what a stock's going to do uh, at earnings. That's the case. There were a lot of earnings plays this year, man. Those cash should be rich than them. And if I want to say it like I want, like growing up, rich than them, you know, you know the next word. So earnings are so, unpre it's an unpredictable event, guys. So this earnings season is, season is over right now. Now it's time to get back to the bare necessities of uh, whether you're a fundamental analyst, whether you're a technical analyst, whether you're a hybrid, whether you, you know, you read the tea leaves or, you, or, you know, or whatever it is, get that edge down and repetition, consistency, and get with the same group of, of individuals that, that kind of boost you, give you positive feedback and, and just, you know, nothing negative. Nothing, don't, don't question why I did that or w walk me through it. So, uh, run up Randy. I like that. I'm gonna put my email in here, guys. Um, if you have any questions and that's it right there. Uh, I'll open up the trading room tomorrow. I'll have a little music going and, uh, I might do a book by phone. That's what I call it. Audible audio book. Uh, have some good ones uh, right now. So thank y'all. Have a great Sunday. See y'all Monday. Thank you, Colin, Robin. Who else? Ricardia, Ben, uh, Ronisha. What's up, Ronisha? See ya. Zara, Zara, I said it correctly. I said it correctly. Jamelin, what's up, Crystal, Cassandra, Ajoba, Cliff, what's going on, Danielle, Esther? We got got the whole crew in here, both Esthers. Jerry Fitzstar, what's up, Jerry? Kay Kelly and Kim, hey Kimberly, my boy Colin, Marsha, Mo Fuller, the Mo, the 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 triplets aren't here tonight, but still. But thank y'all for coming, man. Uh, I'll be in here in the morning. Okay. And I'll, I'll post this, guys. I'll post this and you can have the replay. All right. Take care.